That pretty much wraps up what we need to talk about in a general overview of Nidarians. Let's look a little bit more specifically at one particular group within Nidarian, the corals. We're all familiar with the classic view of a beautiful coral reef, lots of colors, lots of animals swimming around. But how did it get there, and what is it exactly? Well, remember, corals are a type of cnidarian. They're very, very small, and they live in colonies. Together, the colony will create the large structure that we actually know as corals. As corals reproduce and make a coral larva, the larva will swim, similar to what we saw in sponges, land on a nice hard surface, and go ahead and start growing. Once attached, it reproduces asexually to produce the entire colony. Together, the colony produces the hard outer protective shell that form a coral head, or the main body when we think of a coral. A couple of different types of coral that we're looking at here include a brain coral, elkhorn coral, and a sea fan coral. Sea fans are actually a type of soft coral and move in the waves, but they are still considered a type of coral. Now, after the colony has established itself, eventually it will die. But as old coral dies, new coral forms on top of it, leaving the hard outer structures underneath. Over time, coral reefs can build up to become quite large. The Great Barrier Reef is actually over 2,000 miles long. That's about the distance from Dallas to Miami. It also happens to be the largest animal-made structure on the planet, and is even visible from space. Not surprisingly, with all that space, coral reefs are the most diverse habitat on the planet. Check out this video clip, which talks about how corals form. A dive on a coral reef is a voyage to another world. The surrealistic landscape is shaded in blue and surrounded by life. Life in a thousand forms. The coral reef is a gathering place in the ocean. It's a place which provides a variety of food and shelter in the tropical ocean, where such variety is hard to find. The entire tropical ocean depends upon the coral reef for sustenance. The reef itself may look like a collection of rocks or boulders, but actually it's a living, growing organism, a colony of tiny animals called coral polyps. These little polyps all work together to create huge and varied reefs, some of which are the largest structures on Earth, stretching hundreds of miles across. Much like their relative, the sea anemone, coral polyps have sticky tentacles with stingers to catch passing prey for food. At night, the polyps feast on small floating organic material called plankton, which populate the oceans. But their primary source of food is microscopic plant cells called zooxanthellae that actually live within the tissue of hard coral polyps. These plant cells also provide the corals colors. Coral polyps grow in colonies, which means that each individual animal is attached to another, and then another. A colony can grow to be quite large. For example, this colony of what is known as brain coral is over six feet across. It contains many thousands of individual coral polyps all living together. A larger reef is formed by many coral colonies, often with many different kinds of coral. A reef may be hundreds of miles across, but it is still built by millions of tiny coral polyps. A coral polyp is an invertebrate animal, that is, an animal with no backbone. However, coral polyps do have skeletons, which they make with limestone. Thousands of these tiny skeletons combine to become the structure of a reef. Ever so slowly, over hundreds or thousands of years, the coral polyps add limestone to their skeletons in layers and grow outward and upward, expanding the coral colonies and the reef. The limestone is made of calcium carbonate. Calcium is extracted from the seawater by the polyps and combined with carbon, 
which is a byproduct of their respiration, to produce this limestone. So, just a quick review of coral formation. A coral polyp will land and attach to a hard underwater surface that's in good light and water conditions. Once attached, the coral then reproduces asexually to produce a colony. Together, the colony produces the hard outer protective shells that form a coral head. When the old coral dies, the hard outer structures are left behind and new coral can form on top. Over time, coral reefs can become quite large. That concludes today's notes on Cnidarians. Make sure you watch the video clips that are linked from the website, and also make sure you don't forget to take that quiz. Have a good day, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.